Hey everybody, Jeff here again, and today we're going to talk to you about the importance of doing lighting in your kitchen properly, like where to put the lights on the ceiling. That's a common question that comes up a lot. So you can see these, these are uh, some down lights that I installed here when we raised the ceiling. So uh, these are LED wafer lights actually, and uh, they're only about a half inch thick, and so we don't use cans anymore. We just cut holes in the drywall and we put the LED wafer lights up. But a question we hear quite a bit from people is, how far apart am I supposed to put the lights? Where do I put them? How far in front of the cabinets do I put them? And so we've done a lot of experimentation with that over the years. And I can tell you that many builders get it wrong. In fact, I have never once yet walked into a kitchen in any project and seen that they got the spacing of these lights correctly. By the way, I just wanted to remind you, if this is your first time here on the channel, welcome. We're glad to have you here. And you might want to go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and then hit the bell icon next to it so that you can get alerted every time we produce new videos. We generally upload videos once a week and we have all sorts of topics covering all areas of remodeling that you're going to run into and all sorts of engineering disasters. Okay, so I wanted to just take a minute here and show you. I, I came up with this plan here this drawing and it basically shows a bird's eye view if you were looking down from the unit up above as to what is going to happen on the ceiling here so if you see all of these brown uh, things here these represent wood pieces these are the um, um, the furring strips or the strapping the, the ceiling strapping that we're going to put down so these are two by fours that we're going to lay flat up against the ceiling and we're going to um, drill them into the concrete now here's our disc lights here, and I'll show you those in a minute. The disc lights are, are what we have to use here. We actually call them wafer lights. They're LED wafer lights. And these will fit in the one and a half inch space that's up in there. And we'll pre-wire their, their little uh, cans, their, their tiny little power supply cans. Um, we don't use the big cans anymore uh, to, for recessed lighting. These discs just clip into the holes that we're going to make in the drywall here. And if you notice here, I make my spacing three feet from every wall. And this is where a lot of people drop the ball in kitchen lighting. And, and I, we just went through this at my friend's house. The electrician came in and put, like for example, this light here, like just inches away from the front of the cabinet. And when you do that, it creates too much of a harsh shadow that goes down onto the counter. And you'll end up with darkness underneath your counters. So the way you, overcome that is you have your lights out three feet from the wall and that creates a nice wide dispersion pattern of lighting so it's very simple there's not a whole lot of rocket science to it but so many people drop the ball on this very important point make sure your lights are at least three feet away from the wall not two feet away from the wall you don't want to be 12 inches away from your cabinet you want to be 24 inches away from the front of your cabinet here Okay, so you're looking at the nearly completed remodeled kitchen that we did. And these are, of course, the cabinets that we put in. And there's the granite countertops and the limestone backsplash. So I wanted to point out to you uh, about the lighting here. And I'll show you on my uh, drawing there that I made. If you recall, we did four lights. So there's going to be two over here and two more lights over here. And you'll recall that I mentioned that we always want to make your lights come out 36 inches from that wall, from the back wall. Okay, and same with over here, these two lights here, they start off, that, that first light right there is 36 inches off the back wall. The reason why you want it like that is so that the light can be, let me swing off to the side to show you, so it can be 24 inches away from the front of the cabinet. That's where you want your light to be. Same with over here, this light here is 24 inches off of that cabinet. So I want you to take a look at here, see how we have them here? Uh, these here are actually spaced 24 inches from the cabinet. That's my rule of thumb, is I always try to be 24 inches in front of the cabinet. And the reason why is these lights have a 
a big down pattern. That's why they're called down lines. And the, the light spreads as it goes down, right? And what happens is it comes down and it hits the bottom of this cabinet and it will make a shadow here on the counter. But you'll notice on my counter, there's no shadow there. That's because I have the lights moved far enough in front of the cabinets here so that when the light shines down and it goes all the way to the back corner here and it doesn't cause me any dark shadows. So we're going to show you some other kitchens in this video that were done highly improperly where you'll have like dark shadows right here just simply because they had the lights too close to the cabinets. Now typically I see a lot of builders that put the lights 12 inches in front of the cabinets and that simply is not enough. All right, so uh, if we look here at this light here, this is a, another one where it was 24 inches in front of this cabinet here. And as you can see, the lighting disbursement there leaves it nice and bright all the way back into that back corner there. So we have no shadow. The only place where you're gonna see a little shadow is on the corner unit here. So if you look here at this corner unit and follow the light down, you can see only in the very back corner does it even get a, a little bit dark. There's nothing you can do about that because you'd have to really be out far. But in order to keep everything pretty um, even here, evenly spaced, you, that's the, the only point you're going to have a problem there. So our rule of thumb to keep in mind is 36 inches off the back wall which puts it 24 inches in front of the cabinet. That's our rule of thumb that we always like to go by. And so we keep everything symmetric. We try to keep, you know, a nice grid. Four lights is really all you need in a small kitchen like this. If you have a bigger kitchen, say something bigger than eight by 10, uh, then you could probably go with uh, six lights, but I'm, I'm still not sure you would even need it. Yeah, you can experiment with that too. And then over here in this cabinet here, because this was a full depth cabinet that goes over the refrigerator, this sticks out a lot further from the other cabinets. So the light is gonna be a little close to him. What happens over here isn't quite so as important as what happens over here. So we stay nice and bright, okay. Now this kitchen was an interesting kitchen because this used to have a suspended ceiling, you know those old, ugly old grandma ceilings from the 1970s that were plastic and the fluorescent lights were behind them. That's what we had here. And it came to right here. So you couldn't even have these tall cabinets in here. They had these ugly little built-ins in here in this kitchen. We raised up the ceiling here like you see it, and then we added these LED disc lights here. So this made this kitchen look just so much more modern. It made it look bigger, and we improved the lighting greatly compared to what the builder had in here before. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at some other houses and we're going to show you just how bad the lighting was designed in these other kitchens. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, now here's another example of a property we were working on here with a bad lighting design. So if you look here in the kitchen here, you can see the shadow on the counter and the shadow is pretty much right under the cabinet here. Whereas if you remember a few seconds ago, I showed you in the kitchen I just finished working on how I had bright light going all the way back to the corner. The reason is, is because here, this is very typical of what we often see in these kitchens, is the builder puts his down light right here and it's basically just, I don't even think that's 12 inches in front of the cabinet. It's barely in front of the cabinet. So what does it do? It shines most of its light right there. You can see the hot spot right there on the top of the cabinet. And then it gets dimmer and dimmer as it goes down. But it's, it's it's such a steep line that it comes right down here like this. And that's why you're left with a dark shadow on the counter. So the people that designed this house had absolutely no clue what they were doing. And I want to show you over here on the other side the same thing. So this cabinet here, they've got a light that's right above the cabinet. And again, you can see the hot spot on top of the cabinet and not so much down at the bottom it's kind of dark down there and we can move some of these items here you can see there's your shadow on the counter that's just unacceptable that's bad lighting design bad planning and lastly on the, the last light here this one goes right over the island here not much can go wrong there. 
because uh, it is directly over the island. Uh, but then again, you know, this was the style back in the early 90s and the 80s and the 70s was these these big cans that go deep into the ceiling and almost a hundred percent of the time I see electricians put these cans in wrong because when you go up into the crawl space up above you'll see they don't adhere to the National Electric Code which says they have to put a some type of a grill over the can and then protect that so that they can't put insulation directly on top of the cans so that's a that's why we nickname this type of lights we call them fire starters because a lot of fires get started this way and a lot of sloppiness down here in florida dealing with this type of lighting um up in the attics when they come in to, to like maybe put in new fixtures for you and they clear away the insulation that's supposed to lay on top of the drywall ceiling here and they don't put it back when they're done so I'm willing to bet that many of you that have lights like this, if you were to go up in your ceiling above it, you'll see all of your insulation is cleared out of the way, and you got hot spots all along the drywall there from the heat from the attic because they didn't put the insulation back. That's just, you know, construction stupidity that we see all the time down here. So let's go take a look at another property. Okay, so before we go take a look at it, the other property, I just wanted to take a one quick quick look here at these lights here, these three lights here. So all three of these violate my rule of making the light 36 inches off the back wall. These lights here are maybe 18 inches to 24 inches off the back wall. That's unacceptable. They need to be 36 inches. That extra foot makes all the difference in the world in getting the proper spread of your down light onto the counter so you don't have shadows like that. Okay, so here's another house that's in the same street as the house we just looked at. And you can see, if we look from the side here, how close the light is there to the top of the cabinet. And if you look down, you can see the shadows that it puts. I mean, these are deep dark shadows right underneath the counter there because the light shines practically straight down. And then if we look at this other one over here, he's actually above the cabinet. I don't know what the builder was thinking when they did that, but that light is actually above the cabinet. It's not even in front of it. It's over the top of it. And it also leaves pretty good size shadow as well there. And then coming back over to this last one over here, you can see a good shadow right there under the, under the cabinet, right there on the counter. And that light is pretty much equally almost directly over it when it should be probably 24 inches out in front of it. That light should probably be back way over here somewhere. And then it would have given you a nice dispersed down light and it would have gone all the way back into the corner and well lit underneath. Yeah, we probably ought to have one here over the stove or, or a lot closer to it because it just seems really dark under the stove here. Now, of course, the camera's going to brighten it up a bit, and you might be looking at it and thinking, oh, it looks bright. But when you're standing here looking at it, you now there probably could be some better lighting in, in there. So you'll see here, um, normally this would have been 24 inches in front, and it is in front of this cabinet. But because we went with the full depth cabinet in front of the refrigerator, it's, it's really only maybe a foot at the most. But the importance of that is if you look at the downward cone of light here, where it comes down to the cabinet, and you'll notice you can see it's completely brightly lit all the way to the back wall. You don't see any big harsh shadows like you do in some of the other ones, um, like the one we just saw uh, with all of the white cabinets. You could see how poorly placed the lighting designers did that kitchen. And if we come over to this other side here too, you'll see the same thing on the left side of the stove because we have our light right here 24 inches in front of the cabinet when it shines down with that cone that cone comes down at an angle and it's able to light up that whole area all the way up to the back wall so the reason why you have dark shelves and I want every every one of you to go and check your shelves right now on um, your counters there check out your counter and see do you have a, a dark shadow like you know like the, like the uh the dark side of the moon you have a dark shadow right around here and if you do that's because you have a the light that's too close 
So their light, your light is probably not going to be separated from the cabinet like mine is. Your light is probably real close, like the one I showed you earlier with that white cabinet, how the light was almost in front of it. And when you have that, the light comes straight down like this and makes a straight down beam to here. So you have a dark shadow for the whole last 12 inches of your cabinet, essentially. And that's not right. This is the way you were supposed to do it. And the problem is, is all of these builders, they're just idiots. They have people designing the lighting in your kitchen that have absolutely no idea what they're doing. Now, the only place we're going to see a little bit of a shadow is you can see right in the back end there of this corner cabinet. And that's unavoidable at all costs, no matter what you do, really, because the cabinet right here comes out so far. It comes out, if you look at it, from the top there you can see it just comes out real close to the edge of the counter anyway and even though we have a set of this light here is way over here and this other light way in the back is way over here it's still not enough to overcome the angle and the distance that it, the light is traveling so you can see the light is going to come down this way and hit this edge here and that's how we end up with a little bit of dark back there but even then that's not like completely dark like some of the other kitchens like the one we just showed you so this is how you do the lighting folks and uh, it's important too because had i not especially above the kitchen here above the sink you see what is the cabinet here if i had not put this light this far out in front we probably would have had a shadow on this backsplash here behind the sink. We would have had a shadow there caused by this upper cabinet had I made the light closer like a lot of the other people do. For some reason, a lot of builders think that you only need to put the light 12 inches in front of the cabinet, and that is just not true. It's got to be 24 inches in front of the cabinet, which by deduction means that you have to put your light here 36 inches off the back wall so that's all you got to remember and i made it symmetrical in this kitchen here too so it's 36 inches off that wall 36 inches there and then 36 inches to that wall and we did this small kitchen this is an 8 by 10 kitchen we did this with four lights you can see them right there there's all four of our lights right there and it lights up the kitchen very nicely and very evenly so this is why it is so important for you to design your lighting ahead of time. Think about it very, very closely. Uh, what do you want to do with that lighting? Okay. And so that's why some people do the under cabinet lighting. I'm not a fan of doing the wired pucks. I like to use these little guys here. You'll see this one here. These are small LEDs that are controlled by a remote control. And they'll, they may not always be completely, totally as bright as the, the big plug-in ones, but at least it'll put some light down in there if you ever really need it. But in this case here, we don't really need any under-counter lighting here. 